Hello and welcome to McClendon Studios Random Thoughts and Observations. I'm your host David E. McClendon Sr. and uh, today we're going to talk about the CPR class that I taught at the uh, American Red Cross in Spartanburg, South Carolina. A little background history. Um, when I first joined the uh, I Have a Rescue Squad, I had some um, basic first aid training, but uh, some of the other people in the junior squad did not, and uh, I took it on myself. I decided that, hey, I wanted to have the most training I possibly get for the, being in the junior squad, so I can actually do something in the junior squad, um, and actually make a difference. And at the same point in time, I thought, well, while I'm doing that, um, all these junior members can get uh, different training, and we'll be ready to go, and the junior squad won't be the weak link in the uh, uh, mechanism here. So, um, I found out and signed us up for uh, some first aid classes up at the American Red Cross, and then later, after everybody was first aid certified, we got us all CPR certified, and then we went on and got the advanced first aid certification. And then I thought, well, there's nothing left for us to do. Um, I'll go ahead and get my uh, instructor in CPR and first aid. And uh, since I was the only one in the junior squad at that time, old enough, because you had to be at least 17, um, and uh, the older people had already rotated out by that time into the uh, senior squad, um, I was the only one who was age eligible to uh, take the uh, training to become an instructor. So that's what I did. I became an instructor. And I thought, well, I'm going to have to try to find me some different classes to teach. Uh, go out and, you know, I don't want to just have this instructor and do nothing with it. Well, about the time I got my uh, certification, um, the Red Cross started calling me left and right. Can you teach a class here? Can you teach a class there? And I taught in all sorts of businesses, all sorts of churches, all sorts of schools, all sorts of clubs. And um, basically, it, um, my schedule as a uh, high school student at that time made it uh, very easy for them to set things up to where I could do these uh, classes in the afternoon uh, after school and uh, it was a big help for them and it was very interesting for me. I learned a lot. I did a lot of uh, first aid presentations and I'll tell you about uh, one of them after a while but right now I want to tell you about one when I moved to uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina. I uh, informed the uh, local Red Cross, the uh, I believe it was called the Palmetto chapter of the American Red Cross and they serviced the or served the uh, Spartanburg County and Union County at that time, and they may still do so, I don't know. Uh, they also had me come in as like a utility person to make sure that the um, um, mannequins, the recessa andes were working properly and that the supplies were together for different first aid courses that would be taught and uh, getting the books together for different first aid courses that would be taught. Anyway, uh, to make a short story long, as I usually do, um, one day I received a call from the safety director of the uh, um, Palmetto chapter, and he asked me, uh, could I help co-teach a uh, um, CPR course that weekend? I was like, co-teach? I've never co-taught before. And what it was was that there were so many people uh, that foreman out of this plant in uh, um, there in the county that needed to have uh, CPR training for some type of certification they were having to get for the plant. And uh, they needed it that weekend in order to qualify. Okay, um, no problem. Uh, so I got signed up. Out of, had not ever met the uh, gentleman that was going to co-instruct with me and uh, I got up the uh, Saturday morning I looked and I had five dollars which I could spend on lunch and I had uh, very little gas in the car as a matter of fact the uh, fuel light was on um, was on indicating that I was very low on fuel and I decided well maybe I'll make it there and make it back and if not I'll figure something out so I got into the car and drove up to the uh, um, American Red Cross, met my co-instructor, and he'd teach uh, one of the lectures, and i teach the next lecture. I'd run the uh, projector, and uh, we'd both uh, work on the uh, practical aspect of it, where we watched to make sure that people were doing the uh, um, CPR correctly on Recessa Annie. Um, we had progressed fairly well through the day, and it got to be lunchtime. And uh, one of the, uh, the leader of the group uh, approached me while I was doing a little straightening up, getting us ready for uh, after lunch, and he said, uh, David, are you going to go with us to lunch? And I said, where are y'all going? He said, uh, we're going over here to Quincy's, which was a steakhouse. And I said, nah, Quincy's is out of my budget. I've only got $5, and I'm going to go down to Hardy's because I think maybe I can get something to eat there. And he said, I didn't ask you that. He said, are you coming with us to Quincy's? And I said, well, I really don't have the money. He said, I didn't ask you that. Come on with us. Anyway, so we got down to uh, Quincy's, and the uh, my co-instructor got in front of me, and uh, this leader got behind me. And as we uh, approached the, the line, he asked me, he said, uh, 
what kind of steak do you like? I said, well, usually I get the number nine, which is a ribeye steak, and I have it cooked medium and get a baked potato. Uh, but today, I think, uh, looks like I can probably afford that hamburger there, so I'll get it. He said, I didn't ask you that. Anyway, he reached over and put up one of these big, never-ending salad bowls on my plate, you know, where you can just keep going back to the salad bar and get salad if you have that one. Uh, this was back before the days of uh, health department regulations where you get a new bowl or new plate where every time you make a trip to the salad bar. Anyway, he put that on my plate, and I'm like, oh, I can't afford that. And he said, I didn't ask you that. And we moved on down the line. He said, what kind of dessert looks good to you? And I said, I can't eat dessert. I'm a diabetic, and the uh, sweets are bad for me. He said, okay. Yeah. He didn't push that. We got up to the uh, register, and I told him, I'd like a hamburger. And uh, he said, cancel that hamburger. And he placed the order. He said, he'd like a number nine cooked medium with a baked potato. And uh, the uh, cashier finished that up. And uh, this guy reached over and grabbed the receipt. Now, the numbers on the cash register indicated that it was about triple how much money I had in my pocket. I was like, what am I going to do? Well, this guy reached over and grabbed the uh, receipt and went ahead and paid for it. And uh, we went to the table. We had uh, um, a good conversation talking about the uh, different uh, things that they were working on out at the, the plant. And uh, they asked me, you know, what was I study in school? And uh, did I like teaching with the uh, um, American Red Cross and about me, my being an EMT? And uh, uh, different rescues I'd had in the rescue squad, and the uh, um, guy said, well, let's go back to the uh, headquarters, and we'll get uh, finished up. So we go back, and uh, a couple hours later, we were finished, and uh, I was standing around talking with uh, this leader and uh, my co-instructor, and one of the other guys came up and said, David, while y'all are talking, I'll go ahead and stick this uh, uh, equipment back in your car. I had brought a few things with me. He said, I'll stick this equipment back in your car for me. Um, we give me keys, and so I just absentmindedly handed him my keys, and he went out. Anyway, um, we kept talking, and a few minutes later, we started gradually headed toward the uh, um, the parking lot. And uh, the gentleman, the leader, asked me. Um, he, he handed me a twenty dollar bill. He said, "Thank you." I said, "I can't accept this. I'm a volunteer." And he handed one to the uh, co-instructor, and the co-instructor said, "Nah, I don't want your money." and uh, handed him back the $20 bill, and I had already handed him back the $20 bill. And uh, we got to talk a little bit more, and uh, the uh, um, leader, or the other guy had said, the co-instructor had said, uh, why don't you give my 20 to David? And the leader was standing there holding the two $20 bills, and he handed them back to me. He said, I can't give you money as a tip for being a, a, our instructor, but I can give you money to help you out. I got out a college boy, buy some gas or whatever. Um, you can do that, can't you? you know, like, well, I already turned it down a couple of times by that point, and I said, okay. And uh, so here I, I was. I had $40, and before I started out with $5, so now I had $45, my original five in these two 20s. And uh, the guy that had uh, gone to put the equipment in the car came back and handed, handed me my car keys, and I thought, hey, I got this $45. Now I can put some gas in the car, and I want to worry about running out of gas when I get home. Well, I got in the car, and I cranked it up, and I started to... Uh, um, looking to see if the way was clear to get to the uh, gas station that was close by. And uh, it was, but I looked down at my gas gauge, and the low fuel light was off, and uh, my gas gauge was reading the full. I went, how could that be? And uh, I realized that uh, the guy that had borrowed my keys had actually taken my car and filled it up with gas. And so here I was, and I hadn't said anything to anybody about being you know, low on gas. I hadn't said anything at all about that. They knew that I only had $5 for lunch, but... Uh, um, that was because I didn't want to go to, um, to Quincy's with them and spend money I didn't have. Anyway, so I got in the car and uh, found out that I had a full tank of gas in $45. And that was where one good deed um, got me a, another good deed. And they were looking out after this uh, broke college boy. And I was really broke that weekend because I had $5 and no gas and didn't know how I was going to eat lunch. And that was a story. I enjoyed all these uh different uh, first aid classes that I, I taught. I learned a lot. I probably learned more than the, the students learned. Uh, anyway, if you uh, like this video, if you um, have found anything in it, then drop us a line. Put us a comment in the box down below. Or send us an email to gindysvideos at gmail.com. That's G-I-N-D-Y-S-V-I-D-E-O-S at gindysvideos.com. Uh, let's try that again at gindysvideos at gmail.com. That's G-I-N-D-Y-S-V-I-D-E-O-S at gmail.com and we thank you and follow this blog if you would.
This is a Federal Trade Commission required notice. When you click on an advertisement that is displayed with this video, or just before it, we receive a small commission. Sometimes, if you merely watch an ad, we receive commission. If you purchase anything by clicking on links on any of our websites, we receive a commission as well. McClendon Studios is a participant in the Amazon Services LLC Associates Program, an affiliate advertising program designed to provide a means for sites to earn advertising fees by advertising and linking to Amazon. Suzanne has written a great book of poetry. It is called Shattered. You can find it on Amazon.com. We have a new book. Many people want to know if homeschooling will work for them. This book may help you answer that question. You can find it on Amazon.com. We also offer you the book How to Pay Off Your Debt. Buy it on Amazon.com. On the 18th of August, in honor of my beautiful child bride, Suzanne, all of our books will be free. Thank you very much, and drop us an email and let us know at gindysvideos at gmail.com. That's G-I-N-D-Y-S videos, uh, G-I-N-D-Y-S-V-I-D-E-O-S at gindys. Doggone it, you'll figure it out. Gindy's videos, G I N D Y S V I D E O S, at Gindy's videos at gmail.com. Or Gindy's videos at, uh, forget all about it, just find an email, send it somewhere, who cares? Gindy's videos, G I N D Y S V I D E O S, at, at gmail.com. And we thank you. Drop us a comment in the box below because we'll never get that email. Drop us a comment in the comment box below and we thank you. <laughs> Tech support, get the AC on for a moment.